You brought me from nothing, and here I am, feasting from the table of the great I am. I'm not a stranger, I'm feeling at home. So thank you, sweet Jesus, for giving this song. Thank you, sweet Jesus, thank you. Thank you, sweet Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the joy that I feel in my soul. And thank you for the victory I know. I know where I'm going and I know where I am. I'm on my way homeward by the blood of the Lamb. I'm led by the Spirit, so I'm not alone. So thank you, sweet Jesus, for giving this song. Thank you, sweet Jesus, thank you. Thank you, sweet Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the joy that I feel in my soul. And thank you for the victory I know. I need to say this. Um, Friday night I was so sick that I couldn't sleep, couldn't rest, whatever. I went and got that prayer quilt that the church had anointed him to give me. Took to the couch. And it wasn't but just a few minutes till I went to sleep. Amen. I praise God for that. So it really works. woman in the Bible days, her last meal almost gone. God sent Elijah to make his word known. He said, woman, don't you worry, for God sent me today. And before you eat, ask him help is on the way just hold on a little longer help is on the way a brighter day is coming for those who believe and pray help won't help tomorrow if you give up today just hold on a little longer help is on the way <clears throat> troubles of this life combine and burdens get you down you think no one is listening you think no one's around just remember what the word says trust him and obey keep your eyes toward the heaven 
for help is on the way. <clears throat> Just hold on a little longer, help is on the way. A brighter day is coming for those who believe and pray. Help won't help tomorrow if you give up today. Just hold on a little longer. Help is on the way. <clears throat> help won't help tomorrow if you give up today. Just hold on a little longer, help is on the way. I'll sing this tonight. I'm, I think this is the one that Brother Joe uh, mentioned when I sung it there. I guess it's been a month or so ago. But if y'all know what helped me sing it, it's in the light. And if there's uh, more of what I need in my life, it's the light of Jesus. And, and I just want that to be in me, and I want to be a light to other people. There's a call come ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel, I let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel, I let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel, I'll let it shine forevermore. Let me not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel, I let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel, I let it shine forevermore. We'll take your Bible. Let's go to Genesis. <clears throat> Genesis chapter number 25. I felt like the Lord gave me this thought a while ago, so you pray for us. Genesis chapter number 25. I thought about her sister Bertha was saying what she said a minute ago about that blanket. It really does work. 
It really does. For the past couple months, you can ask my wife, uh, I've not been able to sleep very much, it seems like. Brother Johnny, every time I'd lay down to sleep, I'd have some of the awfulest nightmares, some of the awfulest dreams. I'd wake up and I'd go, some things happened in my own front yard, Brother Dale. Just last Monday, I went, woke up from a nightmare, looked out my window, it seemed so real. It was captivating my mind, it was really bothering me. And so that night, we got together as a family, and I anointed my little boy. He was having nightmares too. Anointed him, anointed my wife and my little boy. And I anointed my pillow, and since then, I had a dream since. And it really works. It really works. Genesis chapter number 25. I'm going to read a couple verses here. Uh, let's begin reading in verse number 19. Genesis 25, verse 19. These are the generations of Isaac. Abraham's son, Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister of to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. The elder shall serve the younger. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. They called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. His name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went away. Thus Esau despised his birthright. That's all I feel like reading. I felt like reading that, just that whole story there. But uh, you pray for me. I, I really don't. There's times I get up and I feel like I guess I, I know kind of maybe where to go. But I have no clue where to go. But all I know is to, to depend upon the Lord to help us. But if the Lord would help me, is it for sale? And that's what I want to preach on tonight. Is it for sale? As, as Jacob and Esau was here, the Bible said that Esau was a hunter and Jacob was a, pl uh, Jacob was a plain man. There Esau come in that day and uh, he was tired and he, was, uh, he said uh, that he didn't basically care about his birthright anymore because he was about uh, at a point to die. He was so weary. He was so faint that at that time he no longer cared about the birthright. And I pulled that word birthright up and what I was able to find was that basically it was the firstborn and the firstborn had a double portion and so Jacob was I guess wanting the double portion wanting more than his brother Esau would have been able to have and so because Esau was weak and because Esau was tired because he was faint from I guess working out in the field he traded his birthright he traded his blessing if you will just for a little bit of supper just a little bit of dinner and that's what I want to preach on tonight eight years ago when the Lord the Lord saved me eight years ago today at about seven, about 8.30, I guess it was, on a Thursday night. And Brother Dale, I, I, it tasted so good to taste of the Lord. He's been so good to me as I just testified a minute ago about just something that the Lord did for me, just helping my mind. He's been there time after time to help us out of trouble. He lifted my feet up off out of the miry clay, set my feet up on a solid rock, and established my goings and put a new song in my mouth, even 
praising to our God. He's been so good to me. He's blessed me in so many ways. And I'm not for sale. The devil's going to come against you. He's going to try to put something in your pathway. He's going to try to put something in your life to beguile you. There in the beginning of the uh, the Word of God, there in Genesis, Adam and Eve, there uh, that, uh, that tree there of knowledge and good and evil was the only tree that God told them not to eat of. The devil come to them and said, if you eat it, you'll become wise. You'll basically become as gods. And so they, uh, uh, they, uh, they uh, the devil automatically started working in their mind. It got a hold of them and they thought, Brother Dale, there's times the devil comes against me. He paints such a pretty picture. I'll never forget, we was deer hunting several year, uh, years of where we deer hunt. We was up there uh, during the summer going up to the Lansing tent meeting. And Brother, Brother Dale had his four-wheeler there. And I asked him if I could hop on there. And uh, I drove around. You pray for me tonight that the Lord would help us. Uh, we was driving around. I hop on there and drove around the property there. And I know every November when we go deer hunting, exactly where we put the deer carcasses, there's a little pit over there. That's where we always dump them. We take the, take the guts and everything by the bucket full and just dump them over the bank. But during the summer, I drove over there, didn't see no flowers, didn't see nothing uh, all over that trail. But when I, once I got to that spot where I knew we had dumped the carcasses of them dead deer, that that's where the prettiest flowers were. And the scenery was so beautiful. And I thought in my mind, Brother Homer, that that's exactly how that old serpent is. That's exactly how that old devil is. He makes it seem so good when he offers it out to you. But you're going to have to sell something. You're going to have to betray the Lord. Judas, there he was, uh, traded, betrayed the Lord for just 30 pieces of silver. Uh, he traded God. He, I guess he's on his side. But Judas traded just a little bit of money. I can't remember in today's time how much money that was. But when you trade the Master, when you trade eternity just for a little bit of wealth, just for a little bit of, of a portion, and you die and go to hell. I heard it. Brother Dale said it a couple weeks ago about a preacher that had a dream. And that preacher walked through hell, if I remember it right. Said, who was that man over there? They said, there's a man down there in the sand rubbing the dirt, trying to rub dirt through his hands. He said, that's Judas. Said, he's still trying to get the blood off of his hands. My friend, if you sell what you've got, you'll never be able to get it back other than the mercy of God. I've sold what I've had before, Brother Homer, and I regret the day I did. And there's going to be some things that I hope it's all right to say. I hope you hear me okay. Yeah, there's some things that you'll never be able to get back because you sold it once before. You may not be able to feel the power as much. You may not be able to hold certain positions because the Lord may not be able to trust you. There, uh, there. Uh, we read of a story there in Genesis. I, I don't know where to go. I'm just trying to obey the Lord. Uh, we there uh, in the there in the book of Genesis. We read of a man named Abraham and Lot, his nephew. And uh, you know the story as it goes. They said they had their herdsmen there, and their herdsmen were getting, I guess, in an argument. Said that's causing strife. And so Abraham come to Lot, and he said, "We need to separate so it don't put us apart." And so they uh, Abraham told Lot, he said, "If you get the one on the right, I'll go get the one on the left, and if you." get the low one on the left, I'll go to the right. And so he gave Lot first pick. And so Lot chose, and I believe it was the plains of Jordan is what it says. But you know the reason why Lot chose that? Because he said it was well watered. He saw something. His eyes behold up. The scripture plainly said that Lot looked up, and there it was. It looked so good. But you know what? They found themselves in a place that said, the Bible said, that they got up there on the mountain and he pitched his tents towards Sodom. And so that's where he was. He had his eyes on Sodom. Them, that wicked old city. So there they found themselves. They're going to the town of Sodom. And so there they were, him and his family, his daughters, his son-in-laws. You know the story as it goes. The angels come and everything and told them that they were going to get out of there. But they had one requirement not to do, and that was to look back. Lot went to his son-in-laws and told them. And his son-in-laws didn't even go. I can't remember exactly what they said, but they thought he was silly. They didn't want to go. And so there goes Lot and his wife and his daughters and the angels walking out of Sodom there heading back to the mountain and all of a sudden his wife looked back. The Bible said that she turned into a pillar of salt and I'll tell you tonight if you've been born again and if the Lord saved your soul you have no no reason to look back at where the Lord's brought you from. Uh, I mean I look back and thank the Lord for where he's brought me from. That's not what I'm saying. When you deliberately are walking with the Lord and you turn your 
back and you start walking the opposite way. There in the beginning, Adam and Eve had a free will. Just as you do today, you have a free will to make the options, to make the choices that you've got. You have every choice to be able to turn and walk away. And that's why I say, you're not for sale. Don't sell what you've got because what you've got is more precious than gold. I'm not for sale. The devil's going to come against me and he's going to fight me. We're in a warfare. Paul said, I die daily. I thought about the other day. I'm almost done. I was, I was going to, um, uh, I was going to uh, where Brother David works. It just slipped my mind. Boston Mountain Preserve. I had to go there the other day and uh, went through the construction entrance and it turns to a little uh, dirt road there and there's a little trailer on the side of the road there. And if you've been there, you know, it may know what I'm talking about, but there was a little trailer there on the side of the road, and there was a little car there. And as dry as it was, I thought in my mind, Brother Dale, if I lived there in that little trailer, there'd be no point in even pressure washing because that car, you couldn't even see the windshield on that car. It's so covered in dust. It's so covered in dirt. If you got out there and pressure washed it, the only way it'd be clean is if you was out there every single day. But my friend, that's how being a Christian is. you got to get up every single day and determine in your heart that you're not going to let the dust corrode your heart that you're not going to let the enemy come against you uh, we got to keep on fighting this race we're, we're in a warfare we're in a race you got to get up and just run for the glory of God and I hope you can say tonight when you leave the house of God that I'm not for sale Mamma, if you'll come to the piano tonight is it for sale tonight just for a little bit of pleasure. He traded his birthright. It said he despised his birthright. Just for that little bit of pleasure. If you'll play whenever you get a song. That's all I feel like the Lord's given me tonight. As we're standing all over the house tonight. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. Maybe you're here tonight and you've traded things.